served in the army, and you can forgive him for not joining the best branch. Uh, I had to do that. Uh, you know how that goes. I'm so sorry. They can't even get around on their own. They have to ask the Navy to take them anywhere they want to go. It's, it's so tough. It's so tough. Uh, the Israeli security concept is something we're going to talk about. Of course, he found a guy with the last name Solomon to do that, so that was about perfect. Right. This is going to work out nicely today. Um, okay, so safe with man. By the way, uh, we are doing a Facebook Live. If you want to go find Michael on Facebook, just look up his handle. It's safe with man. And M has M A N N. Man, M A N N. Um, the Israeli security concept. What is that? So the idea is all about prevention. So seeing something before it actually takes place. So something a little bit different than what we practice here. So that's the use of uh, the people that are around. So citizens, uh, police officers, security personnel. Uh, so everybody in that state, uh, they grow up very different than what, uh, than what we do. So their lives are very different. So the idea of this Israeli security concept is that we understand what it is we're trying to protect our environment from or against. And we understand that, and then uh, from there, learn what the detectable elements in that cycle looks like. And so, and, and then just ask a very simple question. But that happens two to three weeks to three days to sometimes months before something bad happens. So that's the concept. So very preventative and very welcoming also. Very, very friendly. It's not off-putting. So that's, that's really the, the concept. Of, it's what they call behavior pattern recognition. I think that's a big deal when it comes to church security is you know, you use the word welcoming. I mean, I think anybody can understand when you go to a church, the last thing you would want would be for there to be metal detectors and bomb-sniffing dogs and guards with wands. And church is always a place that's very welcoming. And so by implementing, I think your phrase is the best way to put it, it's not about, and it is about. So give us a, give out your phrase that you use all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's about prevention, not response. And, in, and you know, I'm, I'm an American. I love this country's draft. I travel all over the world. Greatest country in the world. But we are very responsible. It's the nature, it's our nature, uh, and it's, it's you know it's how we were founded. And so for some of us, and so it, it is about prevention. And uh, very specifically in churches, um, when we focus on response, we really start to focus on those very tough, hard security measures. It could be off-putting. It's not that you not that you can't have them. They just need to be very covert in nature. But what needs to be uh, up front and very forward or the overt nature is that opening, very welcoming uh, environment where your security team understands what they're looking for two or three weeks before something happens. Uh, and then they ask a question. And, and again, uh, it might be something as simple as a five-second process of determining what that person's name is, where they're coming from, uh, but just very different from the way a lot of, a lot of the ways we look at security. This is one thing I really appreciate about you, is that you don't approach church security from the hardcore tactical, jumping out of helicopters, you know, SWAT teams everywhere. It's, we are part of the church, you understand the churches, you understand how ministries go, and you understand the, the environment that needs to be had. Let me leave off with a question um, that I think is asked probably more often than not, at least from what I've experienced. And we'll let you get started here. We have a bunch of guys at church who already have a concealed carry permit. We don't really need a security team, right? right. So understand that guns, and, I'm, and, and anybody that's out there now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm 32 years student at uh, Colonel Cooper's modern technique if you're shooting in Colonel Cooper as well. And uh, so understand I'm not against guns. It's great to have them. Uh, I think especially with, with, for men in, in this country, Guns are a big thing, but understand that guns do not provide protection. Guns are a tool of response. And so when we start to talk about physical protection, we always think about guns. Understand guns happen and they come out when something is happening or when that event is occurring or most of the time it's afterward. So the idea is that we understand what's going to happen before and that, it, that way we never have to bring the gun out itself. So it's not about the gun. It's actually about what we see before that comes into play. It's about prevention. Exactly. No, not not response. response. I love that phrase. Okay, uh, what's the best strategy for a church security team um, when it comes to actually having one? What should the focus be? Yeah, focus is, number one, it has to be part of the church. So the security team or the security ministry is no different than any other ministry in the church. Uh, so it, it, it has to, number one, obviously there's folks in that body that are serving the church. Number two, they're in fellowship with each other. 
And number three, they also serve the community. So, the number one, so that's the first piece. It is a part of the church. It's not something separate. It's not like we're bringing in, you know, we're not hiring people to go to Afghanistan to protect, you know, to protect the foreign dignity. It's folks in the church. So number one, it's about service to each other, the church, and the community. Number two, that, that process and that program must be, be very open. You must be seen. You must be seen outside. You must be seen in the doors. You must be seen inside. And those folks that are on those posts or in those places in the church welcome people as they come in. And that's actually part of the security process. You just don't know it. So from a, an outsider's perspective, the people who are securing the church are often the same people who are greeting you at the door, checking your kids into the, the kids' churches, getting you set up at guest services. Would that be right? It could be. It could be part of that, yes. Or if you don't have the resources, you've got very specific people that are on the safety or security team that may be just doing certain posts, but they are throughout the church and they are welcome. Well yes, absolutely. What I'm hearing from you is that if you can't hire 30 armed guards, don't even try this. Is that what it, it, <laughs> it's all about the body and service. It's all That's about right. using the body and service. Um, I'm going to take our first written question. Um, I'll get that. I'll get that. Thank you. I'm going to take our first written question. Uh, so, again, Michael hasn't heard these, so you're kind of surprising him a little bit here. Uh, my church is located in a mall. What do you recommend regarding lobby monitoring during services? Yeah. So, uh, your protected environment is a little bit different than most churches, but understand the mall belongs to someone else, and that space that you're in belongs to you. So, outside, where you have an entrance and where you have, so anywhere you have ingress and egress, you would observe anything around that area. Uh, but obviously what you're focused on is inside. So you've got protection on the inside, but obviously in the mall you still want to have somebody close to that doorway or close to that, that entrance or exit that's also observing the folks that are coming in. So uh, understanding you've got two different environments there, and that's kind of understanding the Israeli concept is really learning about your environments. A little bit different, but it's, it, it, it's really not. But instead of having to look outside and look in the parking lot, your outside ring or that concentric ring that's on that outer layer is just going to be looking inside of the mall. So the concept's exactly the same. You're just going to have a different environment that you have to learn, in addition to the, to the protective environment that you're trying to secure. And that's what, that's what happens with churches a lot of these days anyway. I mean, a lot of startups, for instance, will go into high schools and have churches in high schools. Absolutely. Um, somebody out here has a church in a mall. And so I'm sure that's more than one person here. We're seeing them in strip malls. I have a friend who planted a church in a strip mall, and it's right beside a tattoo parlor. You know, they could be anywhere, in any place somebody wants to start a church. But the principle, I guess, is what you're saying remains the same. Look to prevent things. Set up an environment that prevents things rather than waiting for something to happen and then responding to it. Three items. Number one, constriction frames are layer secure. Layers are secure. Yep. Number two, that there's functions of physical protection. And then the last and the most important is conflict avoidance. So whatever we do from a security standpoint, we do not conflict with the mission of the organization. They were protecting and here in the church we do not conflict with the mission of the church which is to get out there and tell people come inside get inside you know it's, it's so don't build something that keeps them open exactly it's like a hospital that puts gates up and tells the sick people they have to stay in the parking lot yeah so now we want people to come in you know that's what we want so get them in so conflict avoidance is the most important and it fits within the concept that we're talking about so this will lead us to a question that i think when we say the word church security to a layperson, maybe somebody sitting here that's not as familiar as you, they might instantly think, because of what we see on the news all the time, instantly think of a church here, right? That's kind of the thing that we saw it happen in, in, in Texas, we saw it happen in Florida. Okay, so church duties, but statistically, that's not really that big of a threat when compared to other things that could possibly happen. Walk us through some of the biggest security threats that churches actually do face. Some of the biggest things that you're going to have a problem with, obviously, are going to be uh, medical events. So I've run a large team in Brentwood for five years now, two campuses. Uh, our most, uh, you know, probably the most probable event that we're going to run into, people passing out, you know, people falling down, slips, trips, and falls. Those are going to be issues that you're going to These are going to cost churches, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's called something in the spirit. Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. So it's not an emergency, it's part of the church service, but you should have them down. Now, so, so a medical emergency or slip, trip, and fall is going to be the, the number one issue more than likely that you're going to do with the church. Second issue is going to be somebody, especially if it's a large church, that's lost. They don't know where to go. They've never been on that campus. Maybe it's somebody that hasn't even received Christ yet. And so they're asking questions. They're nervous. That's going to be the second issue you're going to have. 
is going, is going, going to be someone that looks like they do not fit into your environment, but it's most of the time it's because they don't know. So they've never been there, they don't know where to go. So, so a wandering person. A absolutely. Uh, that's the second biggest issue. And then the third is that most of the time I do the children's ministry. That's going to be a child that uh, sometimes uh, gets unruly, a child that walks away from a volunteer. For about 15 seconds, that child is lost. Okay, you promise you wouldn't bring my girls into this. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> relax. So those are the three biggest issues you're going to run into, uh, really from a security standpoint, because security is about safety and prevention. Those are three big things that you need to deal with. And of course, being in Middle Tennessee, another thing is going to be weather. Could be. Well, that safe Tennessee stick around for like the weather 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, we'll have something different. I'll try it. Something else. Um, how about this one? What should be required training for security teams? What are some things that we should say, all right, if you're going to be part of a security team, here's some of the things you need to do. Yeah, the uh, very first thing is, uh, and this, it, it sounds strange for, uh, especially for those that, uh, those that are, uh, of us that are uh, members of the congregation, but make sure that the security team truly understands the mission of your church and what it is you're trying to accomplish. I know that sounds silly, but sometimes when we talk about safety and security teams, all of a sudden the focus of the church gets shut off because they're thinking about protection. And so the very first thing is like any ministry, there, pro there needs to be some, uh, some guidelines or a mission laid out for that team. So train on that first. So maybe they unintentionally kind of become an island to themselves? Is that, would that be a way of saying that? A absolutely. And so bring them back to the church and make sure that they understand the mission. So it has to be very opening, very welcoming. That's the first thing. The second is, what are they looking for? What are you looking for two months before something bad happens, two weeks before that thing happens? So behavior and things that are said, those very specific elements that you're looking for before something bad happens. Like, everybody's worried about a shooting. Well, more than likely, that's not going to happen. Uh, we can talk about that. But again, what does that look like you know, two months before when that person's planning that? So that's the second most important thing. So number one, the mission, and then that fellowship. Number two, exactly what they're looking for on post. And then the last thing is, if, if, if we're limited, is how to respond to some sort of an outcome. what does that look like? Somebody passes out, somebody trips over a rug, they hurt their knee, what does that mean to you? Because actually if you're practicing this layer of security concept, you're going to be the first person or the first team to see all those elements in there. So what does that mean? So if I, you know, if it's very limited, we only, only have a short amount of time, those are the three most important elements in physical protection. And even with executive protection, secret service agents, anybody, anybody have family members that are secret service agents or do personal protection? If you so, do, you're not allowed to raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I designed those programs for a couple of years. Those people that are protecting high, high net worth folks, high risk individuals, three of the most important elements in executive protection, just like this program. Number one, understanding who's protecting and what we're protecting. Number two, medical emergencies that you're going to have to respond to and truly understand the mission of what that looks like. And exactly, exactly what it is we're looking for. Not the guns, not the hand to hand. That's, that's great to have all this stuff. It's nice to have that, but the three most important what we just talked about. I think maybe for some it's a revelation to us today. Because I don't know how much of the news you watch or how much of security in churches you hear or read about. It seems like everything is church shooters, church shooters, church shooters, church shooters. You know, people with medical emergencies, come on, when do we ever do that? So this is very interesting. What was the number? Maybe you have it off the top of your head. Um, the amount of time that last year when he came in and, and took the lives in that church. It was like six seconds, something like that. It's very, very quick. Very, very quickly before uh, you know, somebody, had, somebody had to respond to that person. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. It's very quick. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's move, on to a, let's move on to another question that we pulled up here from the audience. Is a church more or less liable when they have a, a security team on site? I guess you're looking maybe from, from being sued or from an insurance perspective. Is a church more or less liable when they have a security team on site? Uh, so, not trying to skirt the question, but there's kind of two answers to it, yes or no. So, obviously, if you're deploying firearms at church, if there are guns, if there are intermediate weapons, if you're uh, training your team to do the response piece of it, understand that your insurance companies can know that and you have not done that, you need to notify that insurance company immediately to tell them that you have armed people, on, volunteers on post doing that. So from a liability standpoint, understand if you're deploying armed people, yes, there is more liability. The insurance company wants to know that. 
Absolutely, there are going to be some very specific questions you're going to ask. If you're armed, if your team are armed, or they have any weapons. And some of those questions are going to be, I mean, I've just been doing this a lot. Number one, what's the qualification, what's the standard? Number two, uh, what's, you know, what are you doing every year to requalify? Uh, what is the procedure? What's the use of force procedure? Uh, what is the training involved? How many hours is that? And then how many people on your team are armed? And, and what does that look like? How many hours a week are they standing post with guns? And, and probably one uh, written guidelines within the church's documentation saying this is what our department's called, here's the department's leader, here's who's I mean, I would imagine that would be true, right? Absolutely. So in that use of force policy, a lot of times, look, I've written policies for churches before, we will add that structure in that policy so we'll have to make it official. Make it official, and the insurance company wants to know that. So is there liability? Absolutely. It's, you know, no different than the children's ministry. There's liability in the children's ministry. A little bit more liability, uh, obviously, if you have volunteers carrying weapons. And don't, don't misunderstand me. Um, I manage and design armed teams all over the world for many, many years. I'm a weapons person. Just understand as we talk about that this the churches, there is liability there. Let's stay on this topic just for a second. Yeah. Um, when it comes to putting people on a security team, are background checks necessary? Absolutely. It's like with any volunteer ministry, and so there's a couple ways to do that. You can do that through the background check process or open source process that you currently have in place. And then if you have a licensing standard, like of course if you require someone to have a carry permit or an armed guard license, then the state's going to do a second background check as you go through that process. That's important. That's yep. important. Okay, uh, changing gears here. How about this? Um, we don't have a lot of money. This is, this is the question. We don't, we don't have a lot of money. We're a small church. Can we go ahead and start a security team? Absolutely. Because it's important. Number one, it's a place for people to serve. Sometimes for people that can't find another place to serve. And number two, a safety team is important for your church. Uh, so yes, uh, it doesn't matter how small, how big, it's very important. Start that process right now. Um, if you have a probably budgets, that kind of thing, and you start to talk about that, the minimum amount of you know, really, equipment that you need. Number one is obviously finding those people to serve, that want to serve the church, that have a service heart. Number two, some sort of identification, not a badge. You don't have to have a security badge, just a name tag to let everyone know when they come in that this is someone that's volunteering for the church. And number three, just something where they can communicate with each other. It doesn't have to have a radio. You don't have to have a radio. I mean, you know, there, there are apps on your phone now. A walkie-talkie app where you can communicate with each other. So if you have cell phone service, you have a way to talk to your, your team members. So the big takeaway here is make sure everybody wears a shirt that says church security leave us alone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, that seems right. Yeah. Just the opposite. <laughs> Just the opposite. Yeah. You know, if it's a bad guy, so everybody understands, uh, uh, if it's someone that wants to harm your church, you don't have to have uniforms, you don't have to have guys with Navy SEAL tattoos, if they're doing their job, the safety team, even in plain clothes with a name tag, that person's going to know that security. There's a process that they go through, and believe it or not, the gun, the search procedures, the cameras, all the hardcore physical protection elements that you're trying to implement, there's not a study anywhere that shows that that deters violence. Two, two elements for violence. Malicious intent, and obviously it means for that, and physical protection measures. Do not deter those whatsoever. Well, let's swing that back around to the Israeli security concept then. I mean, you spent a great deal of time in Israel. When it comes time for them to protect their borders and their hospitals and their airports, how are they viewing, you know, are they going through and are they, are they being big and bad and showing off their guns and things? Or is it more subtle and analytical and watching and observing? What's the contrast there? What's the balance? Yeah, it's both obviously a border crossing with physical security measures and checkpoints, but uh, before all that's put into place and before they put an armed person in that post, those, uh, those soldiers, those police officers, those security personnel are, specific, are trained very specifically in behavior pattern recognition or behavior detection uh, techniques. So they can, so as they talk to someone that's crossing the border, as they're looking around the post to see someone sitting watching, they understand what that process looks like two or three weeks before it happens. Yes. So obviously, it's a border crossing. Sure, they're going to have those security measures, but they're all trained in these behavior techniques. Oh, good. Thank you. 
50 more minutes? That's great. Oh, great. Thank you so much for the extra time. Man, that's just terrific. What great posts. No kidding. Um, all right, let's jump into a new question. You ready? Yes. Uh, raise your hand. No, I'm just kidding. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> um, what's the strategy for a large church event that takes place off the church's property? That's a great question. It is a, it's <laughs> a very good question. So, uh, not church property, I'm assuming, so it's away, uh, they're going to someone else's property. So, that is, are they asking about the process? Yeah, they're looking for the strategy of how a big church should handle having an event, let's say, at a park. Or let's yep. say at the mall, maybe a choir yep. center at the mall. So, the first thing is to, if it doesn't belong to the church, so, and I'm assuming they're talking about using the safety team. So, first of all, understand uh, any liabilities or concerns that venue is going to have, whether it's a park, a mall, whatever. Uh, go to whoever that point of contact is and make sure that there's not any, uh, so number one, do they have a problem? Uh, number two, do they have an issue with you deploying the safety team or specifically observation? Do they have a problem with you bringing volunteers to do that? So number one, is there been problems on that site? And number two, are they going to have any problems with your volunteers actually working that site uh, as, as a safety team? Uh, the uh, third issue, and, and this kind of gets into, so this question comes up a lot with on folks. So if you have an armed safety team and you go off site, uh, understand you're gonna have to notify that venue or that location that that's something that you wanna do and they may prohibit that. And they're in charge. charge. They're in charge, or legally you may not be able to based on the location or, or the type like of place. Like if you go to school or something. Absolutely, you're not gonna bring, uh, bring, be able to bring a weapon into that location. Uh, same, same person wrote down, okay, as a member of a church who's not part of the security team, how can I help? I think the uh, first thing is uh, uh, help from a security standpoint. I would make contact with that safety or security team leader and ask that person as a, as a congregation member, what can you do? I would say when that question comes up, volunteer. <laughs> if you're interested, do something. Yeah, then go serve. Like, ask what that looks like. Serve the church and ask if, if you can be part of that team. But go to the team leader, go to that person that runs that ministry, and ask how you can help is, is just a minute. I've heard that, that pastors are looking for a lot of rogue saints to kind of work their way through the church with guns. And kind of Absolutely. Take, I heard that's a very popular yes, thing right yes. now for churches. So, no, don't, do not do that. Don't do that. Someone's going to say Stephen Solomon said go do that. Do not do that. Um, all right, last question from the audience here. What responsibility or role does a congregation play in security? To what extent is the congregation itself? I know we just kind of talked about individuals, but let's look at the church at large. You know, we, we often in our society delegate things to specific groups, right? We say, these are the experts in this, these are the experts over here, and everybody else is just kind of around letting the experts do what they do. Is there a role for the church at large? So I would say, yes, anything that, uh, that the congregation sees, anything suspicious, anything that disturbs them as they walk in, they should notify a safety team member. But understand, part of the mission for the safety of security team is for those folks to be the eyes on them so those congregation members can worship. So while they're worshiping, someone is on the wall and protecting them or protecting the church to allow them to worship. So I would tell a congregation member if you see something, always say something, obviously. Tell the safety team or security team member what you see. But understand the purpose, especially if you have an effective program, the purpose of the safety team is to be those eyes where you're worshiping Christ. And so your, your purpose to be there is to worship and let them deal with that. But obviously, yes, if they see something, they should say something. Okay, um, let's do this as we, as we kind of wrap this up here. Give us one never do this. <laughs> uh, yeah. It could be on any area yeah. of the Israeli security concept or church security as a whole. Yeah, I, I, I think it's church security, so don't be off the um, I, I do not, and for some churches this does not work, but I'm in a large church in Brooklyn, Franklin. I do not like locking doors. I do not like searching people. We don't do that. We don't search backpacks. Uh, of course, the team that I have is trained in behavioral protection. This is really concept. But, so don't put anybody off. Do not chase anybody away. The purpose of the church is to get people inside. No matter their physical characteristics, where they're coming from, uh, the color of their skin, their nationality, don't put anybody off. Don't do that. So whatever it is you're doing, we don't want to chase people away. It's not the McDonald's concept, right? Get in. Here's your number. Get out quick. It's like going to Steakhouse. Like they call your name. You sit down. Lighting's nice. They want you to stay. They want you to come I in. I'm not just like Burger King. You have it your way. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe so. 
Yeah. It's all yeah. Or like crystals, a bunch of very yeah. small tiny light. Yeah. So well, right? Part of the trip. All right, so switch that. Let's flip it. Yeah. You gave us one, never do this. Yeah. And your never do this is don't be unwelcome. Yeah. Let's turn it around. What's one always do this? Always. Uh, observation. Um, as I go from campus to campus on Sunday, so I'll leave the Brentwood campus to go to the Franklin campus. Uh, and there's, you know, you can't swing a dead cat in Brentwood or Williamson County without finding a church. And uh, wait, so wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you, you can't swing a dead cat without any church in Williamson County, and uh, especially a dead one. That's something so, marine. Yeah, it, it is. So, uh, so as I go to check on leave the Brentwood campus to go to the Franklin campus, one thing that I will do is I'm heading to Franklin. Is I will look in the parking lot of every church that I pass to see who's outside. And normally what I see is no one. What I mean by that is someone to welcome the people as they're coming in, and that should be a safety team. So always, if you have a safety and security team and you start talking about that ministry, have use that layered approach, have people outside, have people at the doors, have people inside. Not just from the safety standpoint, but from the point of welcoming those people when they come in. That is your mission. Not just the safety and security of the, of the congregation and the visitors and the people that are there, but to welcome the folks that are coming in because that's part of the job. You know, in my time as pastor, one thing we like to do is take the ushering staff mm -hmm. and have them roam the parking lot steering service too. Um, it, because a lot of times when the cars can be broken in, um, there have been, been instances of people breaking the cars and stealing things while people were inside the church. And so we would actually have patrols during service, a small group of men, and they would kind of walk around the parking lot just, just to let people know, hey, people are here. Yep. People are here. Yep. And being, and being welcoming as we're doing that. Yeah, I mean, obviously not walking around angry and upset, but just, yeah. just smile on your face, looking around, making sure nobody's breaking in. It's just that sort of thing I think is key. It's the environment, it's the culture of security. Yep. All right, uh, as we wrap it up, give us a final word here. Something, something to take away from. Yeah, uh, safety teams are very easy to start. It's a, it's a very simple process. Uh, again, you just need people that want to serve. You need some sort of identification of who they are. Uh, and then uh, you just need to talk to each other. Um, if, you know, last minute thing, if you have any questions, you have my card on the table, send us an email and ask us and we will answer those questions for you. It's a big process uh, for a lot of churches because they just don't know. So don't be afraid to email us or ask. But again, it's welcome. Uh, if you own a business, raise your hand. If you represent a business, raise your hand. That should be just about everybody here, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, everybody that just raised their hands will probably be very interested in security at their business. Right? Absolutely. We spent a lot of time in churches. Yep. We spent a lot of time that let's very quickly turn it towards business. Yeah. So when we think about security of the business, does anything change? No, it's the same. Now, obviously, we probably want to have people outside the parking lot, but your employees should be trained to do the same thing while they're sitting at the desk. The design of your workplace uh, could be changed without any cost to accomplish the same goals. So it's teaching the workplace, the people that work there, exactly what it is they're looking for before something bad happens and reporting that. It's something that we just don't do that over there. We just don't do that. Uh, it's just not part of our culture. Uh, it, it, schools are the same. Oh, right. Yeah, we are. We are. All right. Social media, you can find him safe with man on Facebook. If you want to go there, like it, leave a review. Uh, if you enjoyed what you heard, obviously you figured out how to get a hold of him. Michael Man Security Services. If you enjoyed this, would you give him a hand today? I'll just, I'll